Hello everybody, my name is Mike Tomorrow, and I want to welcome you to the latest episode of My Life with Asperger's. Um, I know that I have been speaking to a lot of parents online at myautismteam.com and I have met some parents outside of the home here and into the community and one of their concerns was when my kid grows up will they feel comfortable driving and that was a topic that was asked to me a few times and I feel that I should talk about that topic on one of my episodes which I'm going to be doing right now so anyways driving can be fun but it, you can't learn it overnight it takes time it takes practice to learn how to drive you know, I wasn't a good driver when I first started, but I learned to be a good driver. And now I love driving. I've driven for over 10 years. So, I love to drive. Now, when I did go to get my when I did go to get my driving done, I had to get it done the time and circumstances were I had to go and get myself a driver's license and a driver's permit because the fact was at the time I was carpooling with my mom she had a job at the high school I went to but then she got another job in another town so in order for me to keep going to the school I was for high school I had to learn how to drive I had to learn how to get a permit and a license so I could still go to school. So I wouldn't have to worry about getting up early every morning and going to school and being there like an hour before school started. I hated those moments. But I am very glad that I did get my license finally. You know? And I've had it for over 10 years. And learning how to drive can be fun it's like riding a bicycle for the very first time I know you'll make mistakes but you fall off and you get back on you know don't let don't don't let the mistakes haunt you for the rest of your life you will always learn from them you know it took me two times before I passed the driver's test to get a driver's license so, and I'm very happy that I have a driver's license. And I'm very happy that I drive a car. And I'm very happy to live on my own. But anyways, parents might be afraid of their children driving. Especially if they're on the spectrum. Because something can happen and something can go wrong. Parents, don't be afraid. You know, I know how to drive and I'm okay as a driver. I have learned a lot from my parents. I have learned a lot from my driver driving instructors. Now, I know that your kids might be on the spectrum, but when I first started, when I first, when I was first younger, I didn't feel comfortable about driving because I was afraid of it but then you know it's something that needed to be done and hey look at now I'm driving like crazy I love to drive a car I have a car and I've driven all over the country well not all over the country all over the east coast you know but I don't expect your kids to do that right away either because you gotta let them practice first. In order for them to make long trips and to feel comfortable, you got to let them practice. All right. Now it took me a little while, but I was able to master driving down. You know. And driving is a great thing. 
once you get to know it you know and once you get to know it you'll be very happy of yourself because you taught your child how to drive you know I I know that driving can be fun but at the same time you you gotta remember to teach them to uh, keep their eyes on the road because driving if you lose concentration on driving they can get involved in an accident you know don't be afraid of that don't be afraid of your children learning how to drive it's something that needs it's something that if they want their independence is something that they need to get done I know for a fact that some of you live in New York City and you have public transportation 24 hours a day well I mean I'm talking about the people who don't have access to public transportation like people that live here in my campground or people that live in let's say out in the west where it's miles and miles and miles of road you know learning how to drive can be a fun thing I love to drive you know but here's a few things I do recommend I do not recommend your child listening to the radio while learning how to drive I was learn I was taught how to drive when I was quiet in the car all right don't teach them don't let them use the radio okay do not another thing seat belts you need to wear seat belts while driving my parents taught me at a very young age about wearing a seat belt while driving or while riding in their car while them driving and it brought me up so I keep wearing seat belts now and in most states it's a law so you have to wear seat belts while driving I know school buses don't equip with seat belts well most school buses don't equip with seat belts but there are some that I've been on that have seat belts so. but yeah and then when they do get their license let let them drive but don't let them drive with any of their friends in the car some of the states it's a law you cannot drive when you get a license you cannot drive with any of their friends in the car for like six months or something or a year whatever unless it's your family members so I mean they can't go over and pick up somebody and then drive right away they gotta feel comfortable about driving first right now the best way of them driving is to get a job getting a job can help too because they'll teach them to drive back and forth back and forth back and forth and they'll feel more comfortable about driving the same way about going to school particularly high school driving back and forth back and forth college if it's a community college yeah learning how to drive back and forth back and forth you know but if it's a university you probably cannot have a car on campus unless you're like a junior or senior in college now if you're a commuter you have to have a car you have to drive back and forth but you know if you're living on campus then you can only have your car there if you're a junior or senior now don't let your kids take long road trips just yet once they get their license don't let them take long road trips all right let them practice driving first you know I didn't take my first trip until five years ago maybe when I first went out to Pennsylvania 
for the first time in a while. Drive. Now, it can be hard also to drive in a city like New York or Boston. During, especially during rush hour. I have been in New York. I have been in Boston on Friday afternoons. Uh, also Orlando. Orlando's tough on rush hour traffic too. It is tough to drive through those cities on a Friday afternoon. Everybody's trying to get out of them. Now, you got to stay calm when driving. This can go for the same if there's a car accident up ahead and traffic's backed up. Well, in that case, if there is an accident up ahead, take, try to take the next exit off the freeway or try to go on the next street if you can so you can avoid it so you don't be stressed out if you know what I mean now driving in that traffic can be a nightmare too like the first time I driven from New York City on a rush hour on a Friday afternoon but I found a way to get by the major highway I took another highway that goes around in the city so well, anyways now back in 08 was my first trip ever down to Florida by myself driving a car now I took the easy route I didn't take the scenic route I wanted to take the scenic route but I did not do that because of the fact yeah, I wanted to get down there in one safe piece. And also, it was my first time taking a long trip like that. that I didn't feel comfortable driving that distance. So, well, I did drive by myself all the way down to Florida, obviously. But, please note that I didn't go the scenic route or anything like that. I just took, I just took a direct route with a little side trip. You know, that side trip was to the Outer Banks for a night, and then Myrtle Beach for the other night. And then I drove that all the way down to Florida from there. Now, coming back from Florida through my college program, a year later, I didn't take that same route. I took, I took 75 up to Georgia. In you know, I thought Atlanta, Georgia was going to be busy. I went through there at like 8.30 at night and Atlanta was okay to drive through. I didn't expect to drive through Atlanta like that. I thought it was going to be stop and go, stop and go for Atlanta. Atlanta can be judged as a city like New York and Boston. Washington, D.C., you can add that to that list. Baltimore, Philadelphia, same thing. But anyways... That was my first time driving for Atlanta. Then I took a little side trip into Alabama for the first time. First time I was in the central time zone as well. And the only time that I was in the central time zone. For now, I hope to have my life, I hope to go more trips into Alabama or Texas and all of the other time zones. But anyways, back on topic. So I drove for Alabama and then later on, I also visited another state that I have never been to before. Tennessee. Spent the night in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Then, the second day, I drove for Knoxville. Then, I was going to take, and then once I was in Kingsport, I took the highway up into through Virginia, right into Kentucky. Now, I drove like four or five miles into Kentucky. Then I made a U-turn to go back down into Virginia and back onto the interstate because I didn't want, I didn't feel comfortable driving through that way. I wanted to drive through that way. Hopefully the next time I take a trip up there I will do that so I can see more of West Virginia too. But anyways, now my next trip down to Florida, I drove 
I just drove the direct through because I wanted to get down there again you know and I made it to North South Carolina border on the first day and then the second day I made it to Savannah Georgia and spent the night because I didn't feel comfortable well because of the long drive that I had the day before I took it easy and drove like five hours to Georgia you know and then and then I made it to Florida on the third day now driving back from there I took the same route that I drove back like the few months beforehand however once I got into Georgia and saw how far Atlanta was I didn't feel comfortable so got off the interstate took the highway over to route one took route one up and I was like in the middle of nowhere where I stopped for pizza and I was trying to figure out where am I where am I where am I and then I and then I saw the route went into Augusta so I spent the night in Augusta Georgia where the Masters is played every year and yes I did get to see where the where the golf course is the following morning then I got to drive through South Carolina, Columbia, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. I saw where the stadium was, where the Panthers play, and uh, the racetrack where NASCAR races their Coca-Cola 600. And then I spent the night south of Richmond. Now I got up a little bit later when I was in Richmond. And I ended up driving up to Washington took the subway in, pay my respects to Kennedy at Arlington and then got back into the car well I took the subway back, got into the car and then drove home and I wasn't home until like 2.30 in the morning in Massachusetts now my last trip down to Florida I actually was at a camp out a couple for a couple of nights so I was so I was ready, I had the car all packed up, went up, and went camping for the couple of days. Then, afterwards, I drove west on the Mass Pike, then south on the Thruway, and then west again on 84. Now, i never been for that part of New York State. That was beautiful. Now, had I gotten out of the meeting a little bit earlier, could have made it into Virginia. But we spent the first night in West Virginia. Then the second day, drove through Virginia and then took a little side trip into West Virginia, back into Virginia, and then over to Bristol, Tennessee, and got to see the racetrack over in Bristol, Tennessee. Then I was filling up with gas in Tennessee asked the GPS how far I was from Florida and it told me to go through the Smoky Mountains in Asheville, North Carolina which I did then I stopped in South Carolina and then I made it down to Florida now now you can make a trip enjoyable driving trip enjoyable by doing a couple of side trips on the way down like I did now, when I was driving up to North Carolina, just this past last year, I drove for nine hours. Obviously, I stopped for gas twice. But I made it to North Carolina. Now, I spent the night in Fayetteville before I went over to the Outer Banks. Because my parents were not going to arrive in the Outer Banks until the following day. Now it turned out to be when I went over there my parents and my sister and another family that went they arrived out the Outer Banks an hour before I did at the campground so you know it turned out to be a great thing that I spent the night in Fayetteville North Carolina now coming back from there is another different story I took a ferry to get back onto the mainland and then drove down to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. 
spent the night in Myrtle Beach. Then I wasn't feeling too, too good, so I drove. And then just before I crossed into the border of Georgia, I saw the car, I saw a car going into the grass on the side of the road. So I had to pull over and make sure everybody was okay. Then I ended up calling the police to have them come on out and making sure the family was okay and making sure everything was all right. And they thanked me for coming out and helping them, you know. But anyways, I then I had my dinner in Savannah. Didn't feel too good, so I drove a little bit more, and then I stopped for another night at a hotel. I know it was crazy for me to do that, but but anyways, that's the way life goes. Now, don't expect, don't let your kids travel that far by themselves in the car unless they have enough experience driving. Now you may you might be afraid of them driving at night alright but you as a parent need to set the time limit of when they come home alright do not let them set the time because you don't want anything to happen to them now pretty much when I was growing up I didn't go out as much so my parents were okay with me being out but you might have a child who likes to go out partying all the time just make sure you set the time limit to be like 11 o'clock midnight you know they have to be home by this time I don't care and if they don't make it home punish them you know what TV taught us you know I learned my lessons on TV as well as my parents so but yes driving can be fun just don't stress out the kid okay and I'm glad I teach you about this though so, you know if they're getting to the age where it's okay for them to drive hey I'm glad I taught you a few lessons if your children on the spectrum are younger then use this video later on you know or take a lesson from me you know I'm sure I'm probably gonna be out there in the world and I'm probably gonna speak you know and if I ever have my own radio show or TV show this is probably gonna be one of the topics I'll talk about is driving so you'll probably hear my message again but I hope that you guys enjoy my messages that I'm trying to bring out to you. And I hope that you let your kids drive safely. And don't be afraid of them driving, okay? If they want to drive, let them drive, okay? It's But however, even though it's your responsibility to let them drive, it's going to be their responsibility once they get into the driver's seat and drive you know drive alone you know it's gonna be their responsibility to drive all right so please make sure your kids watch out where they're going in the road don't let them text while driving I know I do it a few times but most of the time I don't not particularly on the interstate highway you know I know I do it it needs to stop. I know the state doesn't outlaw texting while driving. I know Massachusetts, my home state, does. I know all the New England states do. I know that New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, Alabama. I don't think Alabama. I know Tennessee outlaws it. Kentucky outlaws it. Ohio outlaws it. Michigan, I think, outlaws it. Pretty much any state outlaws it but here's the thing don't let your kids text while driving and don't let your kids play the radio too loud while driving it'll distract them okay but hey I'll talk to you guys all later if you have any questions just let me know thank you